Welcome to Sisi's Kitchen and Peterson's Farm here at Wuluga. And as you can see today, we are behind the background of our Rosella patch. I am quite excited to show you how to make a perfect Rosella jam. So, of course, we will start with uh, Rosellas. So, just to have a bit of an explanation, um, the, this is the leaf of the Rosella, and that's the fruit. Now, the fruit has been picked, and uh, the red bit is actually called the calyx or the petals, and inside of this is the actual seed. So, what we do firsthand before we prepare making our rosella jam is that when you gathered all your rosella fruit is it's good idea for you to rinse them on running water uh, about twice just to make sure that you get rid of any um, any dust or any sand out of your fruit so you will start with a very clean produce to start off with so what we also have instead of using your hand to peel the rosella just a bit of a tip it's probably best for you to have a uh, disposable uh, food grade glove because uh, with the rosella especially inside of the rosella there's some really fine hair follicles and some people have an allergic reaction when they peel this so to, to save you from doing that be better off wearing gloves so uh, what you can do is again you can use your hand by doing this or what we do here at the Peterson's farm or Sissy's kitchen is we have a Rosella de Cedar, which we also have available on our website. And the easiest way to do this is we just do it this way. So we just push it in and it just separate the seed. So you got the seed and you've got the calyx. Again, we can just do that. So we put the seed over this way and the calyx on that. And we just do that. A few times and that's how we get to shell our rosales as a whole so after we've done that and you've got enough seed so that means you're gonna have your seed in one pot and just enough water to cover your seed so don't put too much water of it so as you can see the color of the, the seeds have started to change so there's a little bit more translucent and then it starts to boil you just keep it for 10 minutes so while this is boiling, our seeds are boiling and as you can see, we've got the rest of our calyx uh, in one pot. Just a few things that you need to prepare uh, when you are going to make the jam is that make sure that you have your bottles um, sterilized. So uh, we have one kilo of fresh rosellas that we're we using into making this jam. So make sure that you also have uh, fresh lids or brand new lids and also you need a funnel and also a ladle to scoop the, uh, the rosella jam into the jar and of course we also need just plain white sugar so um, why would you say white sugar is probably the best one to use if you use raw sugar it probably will make your jam either go very dark and also too bitter in the end so we don't want that so what's happening now is the the rosella seed should be starting to boil as you can see it's almost starting to oh look at that now when it's starting to boil uh, this way we probably will just let it for about just another five minutes and uh, it's really it's starting to uh, release the pectin and the good thing about the rosella seeds it's one of the highest content of pectin you will ever get in a fruit more than the actual lemon seed so this is pretty good so if you have any excess rosella seeds just a bit of a tip uh, put them put that liquid aside put it in the freezer and if you are making things like was uh, like strawberry jam that is uh, very very low in pectin you can use this liquid to set your strawberry jam so that's a really good hint as well so we just stir, do a bit of a stir not too much we just want to see how the actual seeds look like so but you can almost tell that the liquid is really getting thick now this is really looking really good i think we're gonna have a really good rosella jam i'm just really really excited in showing you how to make 
one of the best love jam ever. Especially if you're a Queenslander or you're from the Northern Territory, I think you're gonna love this. The best thing I love about the Rosella is because it's only, is it rich in color? Uh, it's very deep, almost deep red or purple, or almost pink like the shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, but the great thing about it, it's got 10 times more vitamin C than an orange. So the Rosella Calyx itself, it can be used to uh, make tea. Uh, as you can see here, we make a lot of different products out of our Rosella uh, picked here at the farm. So we have about nearly 30 products itself that we make up the Rosella. So of course the most popular one would be the Rosella jam. And we mix all sorts of combination with ginger, with raspberry, with chili, uh, with apple, pineapple. And of course our very popular Rosella cordial, which we can use uh, for flavoring your gin or your, to uh, your tonic or even your whiskey. But even more so, it, you can just add a bit of uh, carbonated water or mineral water and you can make a really nice refreshing drink as well. And don't forget the leaves as well. The leaves are very good to use in your salad. Uh, it's got that really nice tangy taste. And also, uh, it's also good to put in your chutney or in your soup. So if you want to have a bit of that lemony flavor, Rosella leaves are just absolutely perfect. So our Rosella seeds are now almost finished. So we are getting a really good consistency now of the liquid. It's really, um, really sticky, or almost like a glue uh, in some sense, or you would say a bit of gum, a bit gummy in that sense. Now I am quite happy now the way this is looking. It's, uh, it's sort of uh, a bit sort of brownish in color. That means it had extracted a lot of the uh, pectin out of our seeds. And our seeds are almost, uh, pods are almost translucent. You can almost see the seeds so, so clearly. So I am quite happy with that. And I'm gonna show you the next stage. So after this has boiled, so um, you don't have to wait for it to cool off. So if you've got your calyxes or your petals ready on one pot, so all you gotta do is have your strainer ready. So just have it around this side and you just pour it over. And that's what it is. So just give it a bit of a shake. You want to get as much pectin as possibly can. Now the good trick about making the Rosella jam, it's almost a perfect measurement of how much liquid you need to actually uh, use for your pulp. So all you gotta do is after you've done that, so just, just make sure that you can get enough pectin. So just give it a bit of a shake and pretty much use as much as you can and that's pretty much all you need to do now a bit of a tip about the seeds what do you do after you use them um, in, in extracting all the pectin unfortunately you can't boil it again and get another set of pectin because it won't be any good at all but it's going to be good to just throw in your compost uh, and or maybe if you can have pigs or chooks, they love this stuff. So um, don't waste it, make use of it somehow. So what I'll do now is I'm just gonna move on to this plate when we cook our pulp. So when you're making the Rosella jam, unfortunately you can't just let it um, cook by just having the rosellas are too crunchy. You can't just do this, put the sugar in it straight away. You have to do it in stages. So the next stage is we put the liquid in it, the pectin, and now we're gonna let it uh, break down and go to a bit of a pulpy stage. So uh, you can see at the moment it is quite full, but uh, as soon as it starts boiling, it will pretty much, the calyxes will get soft and it will almost reduce to a pulp stage. 
It's okay if you want to go and have a look and stir it if you want. But normally I will just leave it until it starts to boil. And it shouldn't take long. It probably only take about five minutes and it will start boiling. Especially when you have put the pectin and it's still um, quite hot. I'm really loving um, the color of the rosella. You know, the rosellas are just so vibrant in color. Um, I just love the fact that it gives you so much health benefits and it's really nice tasting. Um, I know a lot of people, they think it's really tart, but that is really the essence and what makes rosella so uh, well loved is because it's got that nice taste as well. Now, did you know that the rosellas had come from Jamaica or West Africa and they are called hibiscus sabda riva? So uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, but uh, that is the actual scientific name of Rosales. So now I'm pretty happy uh, the way things are going. So it's starting to boil and our Rosella calyxes are starting to break down and they're really getting a bit more pulpy and soft. And, uh, and as you can see over here, the, the actual liquid is really making things really, really uh, sticky almost. And you almost gonna give you that confidence that your jam is gonna set perfectly. That's why I love things about Rosellas. And every single year I find something so special about Rosella. Well, why not? At the end of the day, I am after all the Rosella queen. I wish you are here with me. The smell of this is just absolutely delicious. And the color is just so stunningly red. If there is such a color I would like to invent or I would want to promote out there, how would you like to be called a new color, the hibiscus red? Wouldn't that be nice? I reckon too. So I'm really, really happy with this now. It's really nice and thick. The actual calyxes have now uh, almost really into pulp stage. So we can turn this off and the next stage I will show you what to do. So what we have to do now is we have to find out how much amount of sugar do you need. So all you have to do now is you have to measure your, uh, your calyxes or your pulp. Either you can measure it by weighing the actual uh, pulp or you can just use a standard cup and that's what we're gonna do today so we're just gonna scoop that's it that's one cup so that's number two cup so this is from a kilo of rosella fruit so that's number three cup you probably say you get about three and a half cup of rosella pulp. So by knowing that, all we gotta do now is we're gonna have to put it back in the same pot. So use that all up together. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we normally the recipe is for one cup of sugar to one cup of pulp as well. But normally I like to make my jam a little bit less sweet. So the star of the show is about the rosella. So you're going to be there to showcase the tart flavor. So we are going to be in this recipe. I'm going to reduce the sugar. So, uh, so we've got the sugar right here. And we're just gonna do a bit of measurement. So normally, if you are at home, you probably either have a spare cup or you can just give it a wash, but we are in the paddock, so we're just gonna do it rustic, as they say. So that's one. I didn't really fill up the cup that much because I want to reduce the sugar a little bit. You have to be really careful on how much sugar you're going to put in. If you put too much, that means it will be too sweet. If you're going to put less than half, 
your rosella might not be long enough to stay um, fresh or it might start molding because it hasn't got enough sugar to preserve it naturally or unless if you're going to finish it in two days that's okay if you want to put half a cup to one cup of uh, pulp so as you can see it's not too full i have it like three quarters so uh so that's number two and we do number three okay and just a little bit because we have that uh, half so i'm just gonna put a little bit not almost maybe like a quarter of a cup so that means we'll make our jam really nice and tart i've just turned on um the heat on the the stove now so all we have to do is we just have to give it a little bit of a stir to make sure that the sugar and the pulp doesn't stick too much at the bottom of the um, the pot. It's a really good mix. It shouldn't really take long for it to boil up because um, our pulp is still warm. Um, and that's the, the good thing. It will give it uh, a short amount of time for the actual sugar to dissolve and mix through the whole mixture. So just clean up the, your cup a little bit, get a smudge of the pulp and the sugar that you have in it and look at that my cup is pink just a bit of a stir very thick already i can almost see it it's just a really a perfect set it's going to be 100 percent you're gonna nail it this one uh, and i think the trick as well with the rosella when they're so fresh freshly picked from the patch and you process them uh, you know the pectin is so rich out of those rosella pods that you will almost guarantee that you are going to set your jam what we're going to do is we wait for it to boil um, you might start with the heat to be really high but as soon as it starts to boil you just have to watch it that it's not too too hot that it will burn the bottom of your saucepan and you wouldn't want your rosella jam to be having a, a burnt flavor because it will become very very bitter um, as you can see over here now it's really starting to bubble and it start to boil that's gonna tell us that it's not gonna take that long. This is really looking amazing. Just to explain to you about the sugar, um, I have a lady yesterday um, at the market and she asked me, um, why is my rosella always seem to be the same flavor each time? And she said that she made some rosella jam and it's either it's too runny or it's, uh, too sweet or sometimes it's too too sour or too tarty and I said say to and I asked her what does she do how does she do the process well she was telling me that when she puts the sugar she doesn't measure the pulp into the sugar so all she's doing is she just putting one cup and then she mix it up and then she tastes it and she thinks it's gonna it's a bit too um, it's still a bit too tart she will put more sugar and obviously she gets enough she puts enough sugar until she's happy with it and sweet enough um, and then she said afterwards after a few days she will um, have this jam in in her in her toast it is so sweet and i did say to her well what happens after you actually had bottled the jam while the cooking process is happening the the sugar in, in the rosala would release its own sweetness so what's going to happen is that if you don't measure the, the sugar to put into your rosella pulp you might have ten that you might have put sugar than what you're supposed to have so that means by the time it's set it will be too sugary uh, and that means it, it's going to be too sweet and the the flavor of the rosella is almost lost so that's why it's always good to measure before you put the sugar in 
this is really getting really thick now and I think it's not gonna be long before it's almost set and the, the smell again um, if I could just uh, show you how thick it this is going if you just um, you don't want to be staring this too much but if you stare it and as you can see if I lift this um, spoon you can almost see it's really getting thick Look at that. That is just telling you it's going to be set soon. This is it people. I'm really really happy with this. I'm just going to give it one final stir and I will show you how good this is. So it's really thick and if you just do that, as you can see, there you go. This is perfect. So what it's telling you? It's time to turn off the heat and let's go and ready to bottle. So a lot of people um, have asked me that when they are making the jam that there is some um, scum uh, on top and they ask me how do I get rid of that. A lot of people what they do is they skim it and they throw it away. Well by doing that you're actually getting uh, a bit of your rosella and you're throwing it out so the only one good tip I'm gonna tell you is this and you should say that you heard it from CC so all you gotta do is while you're cooling off your um, your rosella um, jam is you just keep stirring it off until you can almost see this is like magic it almost goes away so the actual scum is almost gone now while we're waiting for our uh, rosella jam to cool off a little bit, you don't want to be bottling when it's just come out of boil. So you just let it maybe cool off for about five minutes. Now what you have done at the same time is you would have had your bottles uh, sterilized. Uh, some people they do water bath with their bottles. So the good thing about sterilizing your your jars is that means that your jam will have a longer shelf life and it will be less likely that you will have mold in your jam so you know when you're going to make enough rosella jam you want them to be uh, to stay a bit longer and also that you can keep it on the shelf that you don't have to put it in the fridge straight away until you open it so uh, we have our jars so that means uh, you can also um, preheat them in the oven at 150 degrees for about 15 minutes and then wait for five minutes before you actually going to a uh, hot field your jam into your bottle make sure that when you are bottling your jam make sure that you have uh, wash your hands and do not touch the rim or the, the neck of the jars because you know again it is only for your house use it's okay but if you are going to be bottling some jam to give away to families for christmas or for the birthdays you just don't want any contamination within the actual jar so uh, it's either you use gloves or you make sure that you wash your hands uh, thoroughly before you bottle your jam so now i'm pretty happy with the consistency and the color so the scum is all it's really gone so and our bottles are a bit just warm now and our rosella jam is just in the right amount of heat so we're gonna set ourselves up and we're gonna start bottling so bring this along over this side you be, be very careful that you don't um, you don't have rosella jam all over you because this is quite hot and we don't want any accidents we're gonna fill up our jars now so we go one at a time wow look at that color it is absolute magic so fill it up right just almost to the top and then you just shake it a bit make sure that it's nice and clean so all you gotta do is lift it up and you put the lid on and you turn it upside down for about two minutes so that means it will have enough 
suction to actually seal your jaw. So we go to the next one. There we go. We're pretty happy with that. We don't want any bubbles. So the best way to do that is just give it a little bit of a shake and you almost get rid of any bubbles around. Okay. So we do that. And again, we seal and we turn. So we have made four perfect bottles of Rosella Jam. And look at the color of this. You can almost see the pulp in it. And it's full. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Four perfectly jars, four, turn them over. And the good thing is there's a little bit more in there. So you probably will make, depending on how big the size of your jars are, you'll make four bottles and a little bit to scoop and eat out of the saucepan. There you go. So I'm pretty, really happy with this. And I'm sure if you do it the same way, you will get a perfect Rosala jam. So you got two minutes now. They have been uh, upside down for two minutes. Now it's time, time for us to turn them. There you go. Number one, number two, and number three, and number four. And there you go, my friends. This is how you make perfect CC's Kitchen Rosala Jam.